All right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to catch and prevent XAML errors. So as an example, I wanna remove this S here. Now let's run this application and see what happens. So the application launches and it terminates immediately. And currently I have no idea what's going on here. In situations like this, the first thing you should look at is application output tab in Xamarin Studio. I believe in Visual Studio, this tab is called Output. Now, if you look at this tab, you see we have a XAML parse exception. The exception says, type on platform not found. So basically what's happening here is we don't have an on platform type that is not generic. So this is one way to find the exception. Another way is to run the application in debug mode. In Visual Studio, you press F5 instead of Control and F5. In Xamarin Studio, you press Command and Enter instead of Command, Alt and Enter. Another option is to press this play icon on the toolbar. So let's run this. Okay, we got the exception. So we got a XAML parse exception and the exception message is type on platform not found. Now the problem we currently have is that we will not know these exceptions until runtime. And as we're typing XAML, it's quite possible that we may make a few mistakes here and there. So is there a better way to catch these errors? Yes, there is. We can include our XAML files as part of compilation. So they will be compiled into intermediate language or IL. And this has a number of benefits. The first one is that we can catch errors at compile time instead of runtime. The second benefit is that because XAML files are compiled into IL, the size of final assembly will be reduced because these XAML files will not be embedded in the final assembly. And finally, compilation of XAML files will slightly optimize the load and instantiation time for XAML elements. Now, compilation is disabled by default and we need to enable it, but that's pretty easy. Let's go to the solution. Under properties, you find assembly info. And here we have attributes that apply to the assembly as a whole like the title, the version, copyright information, and so on. We can include another attribute here, brackets, assembly colon, and this prefix means this attribute is applied to the whole assembly. XAML compilation. Now we get a red underline here because we need to resolve the namespace. So on top of the file, using Xamarin forms XAML. Now the parameter to this attribute is an enumeration called XAML compilation options. The default value is skip. So I wanna set this to compile. And that's all we have to do. Now if I build the application again, look, we got an error. And here's the exact same error we got at runtime, but now we're catching it at compile time. So this is a pretty good attribute to always include in your assemblies. But just in case you need to disable it on a particular XAML file, you can simply go to the code behind for that XAML file. For example, let's say we wanna disable this on greet page. So we go to the code behind, import the namespace using Xamarin forms XAML, and then apply the attribute to the class. XAML compilation, Compilation options, skip. All right, we're done with the basics of XAML. Now it's your turn. So in the next lecture, I'm gonna give you some exercises 